Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the homestead. I'm Lance. And I'm Nikki. Hey, baby, do you have any idea what we're going to do today? I think potatoes. <laughs> That's right. We're going to plant some potatoes today. Captain Obvious here nailed it right on the head. And we're going to take you all along with us for the journey. We're going to lead you all through how to prepare the soil, how to fertilize them, and then we're also going to take you over here in a second show you which varieties we got and we actually started preparing these a month ago getting ready to sow them in the ground and potatoes seems to be something that a lot of people have trouble with but it's really pretty simple the main thing is people don't give them enough fertilizer because potatoes is actually the heaviest nitrogen feeder that you're ever going to plant in your garden and that's where a lot of people go wrong from the get-go. But we're going to walk y'all through all that step by step. And hopefully y'all be as successful as I hope we will be. Okay, guys. So here we are with our potatoes. This is Yukon Gold. And it is a mid-early potato. And as you can see, this is what I was talking about earlier. We actually set these out under a light a month ago to get these chits to start growing on them to get them ready. I hope y'all can see that good, but that is a lot of growth on these. And that's really what, you, if you wanna get them going early, you really need to put them out under a light about a month ahead of time and let them start growing. That's gonna give you a lot earlier of a success with them. But that's Yukon Gold, it's a gold one, obviously. Now we have Elba here, which has a white flesh with kind of a yellowish skin on it. And the Elba is a mid-late variety. And then we've got all blue, which I think is going to be my favorite. You can see all the chits and the roots starting on that. But the all blue is the latest variety that we have. I think it's going to be somewhere around 110, 120 days. All right, here you got your Huckleberry. It's a mid-range variety. Now it's got a blue outside with a yellow middle. So I'm hoping these blue ones do really well. Yes, they're packed with antioxidants. And our last one that we're going to sow is going to be Charlotte, which is a mid-late. And as you can see, it's gold. It's going to be gold flesh and a golden skin on it. And in case y'all are interested, we got these from Wood Prairie. I hope y'all can see that. We got these from Wood Prairie Farms. We will actually put a link in the description for you guys if y'all are interested. But they're all organic and I was shocked when they got here. They were actually in really good condition when they got here. That was something I was kind of worried about. But as you can see, they're all very, very beautiful potatoes. Okay, guys. Well, look, let's head over here to the garden bed, and we're going to prepare the bed and get ready to put these guys in the ground. See how big this is a mature European night crawler. See how big they get? So the whole point behind these are they make really big long tunnels in your raised bed and that gives all your plant roots a place to travel to get down deeper in the bed and a lot easier. And they keep breaking down all the organic matter in the bed. And when they break it down, they actually make it available to the plants. Okay, guys, so this is going to be an old time trick here. You see how this potato crack in it right here? Okay, it's got a hole in it right there. That's actually perfectly fine, but when you put that in the ground, it's going to want to start rotting right there. So, what the old timers used to do is I got some 90% elemental sulfur right here. You're going to roll your potato around in that, okay? And what that's going to do, you want to fill up those cracks and get a good coating on it. What's that going to do is that's going to stop the bacteria from being able to breed on this and start breaking the potato down. It's going to give it a better chance at survival 
90% elemental sulfur and just get a good coat on it and that's going to give you the best chance. You can do them all or you can just do the ones with imperfections like this, but no matter what you do, this is going to give them a really good chance. And I didn't spend all that money on these organic potatoes, not to give them the best chance possible. Okay, guys, this is what I was talking about earlier. So what a lot of people do wrong is they do not fertilize enough at the beginning, which is kind of pointless because you spend all this money, you do all this work, and you're not giving them the best chance of survival. So this is cottonseed meal with chicken poop and blood meal in it. You're gonna put that, I'm gonna show you right here. We're gonna put a potato right here, okay? We're gonna take a third of a cup of that, drop it right where you're gonna put the potato and massage it and blend it into the soil directly under the potato. That seed potato is gonna grow roots straight down and straight into this. Potatoes are the heaviest nitrogen feeder you will ever plant in your garden. And they need a lot of fertilizer to get going. And then we're going to put a teaspoon and a half of bone meal in there too. And blend that up good. And then we're going to put a potato directly on top of there. The bone meal, potatoes use nitrogen for 90% of their life. Within the last two weeks of their life, that's when the tubers actually swell and then the top dies off. So you really got to do this. To give them the best chance because like i said you don't want to waste your time and money not to have your potatoes not do good so cottonseed meal chicken poop and blood meal in here put that directly under see there's going to be another potato right there okay we're going to put that in and then you just massage that into the soil so you're not setting it directly on a gigantic pile of fertilizer and that's it you'll put your potato on the top of that with the chip sticking up and you'll be good to go you backfill that and you should have big success with your potatoes okay guys so we're ready to put down our fertilizer and start sowing because we have so many different varieties that mature at later dates that is south which obviously that would make this north so we're going to put our latest varieties on the north end that way when the early varieties come out we can succession plant probably melons in that end. And these late ones won't be casting shade on our melon seedlings. way gardening is a lot of work and it's one of them deals you get what you put into it if you don't like to do a lot of work and you're a little on the lazy side that's fine but you're going to reap the harvest of that if you want to go the extra mile and do a little extra work well you're going to reap the harvest of that also what a man sows that he shall also reap is what the bible says and you're probably wondering why we took that compost out of there we're going to put the mushroom compost the better stuff back in this stuff really isn't that great but we were going to use it because it was the first stuff we could find and you guys already know or you're going to find out one day finding good compost is a hard thing to do sometimes so we're going to backfill it with uh with the better mushroom compost because it's far superior to what this is all right let's plant some potatoes <music>
guys, so we've got this bed full and we have more potatoes than it's gonna fit in here, as you can see here on the table. So we're not gonna make y'all watch all that. Y'all get the gist of it. We're gonna get ready to backfill these and then we'll give you a finished uh, picture at the end. Y'all learn something? Look, y'all leave comments down below. If y'all do something different, uh, we would love to hear how y'all do stuff. This isn't just our channel. It's for everybody to learn together. You tell us how you do stuff, we'll show you what we do, and we can all learn together. And that's the way homesteading's supposed to be. You guys have a good day, and we'll get you a finished shot after we backfill. Everything's watered in. As you can see, we left it a little low as the potatoes breach the surface and get up about four or five inches. We're going to backfill it all the way and then we're going to mulch all the way around the base of every plant. That's going to really lock in the moisture because potatoes need to stay moist but not soaking wet. If they stay too wet, they're going to tend to want to rot in the ground, but that's where the sulfur comes in. It should prevent that from happening for the most part. And as you can see, we've done some inner planting here already. We have carrots down this side, and we have some onions down this side. We didn't talk about the spacing. The spacing on all these potatoes was 10 to 12 inches, so we just went with a 12-inch standard and not have to worry about it after that. And that also gives us 12 inches from our onions and 12 inches from our carrots, so everything should work together nicely. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.